Hi, it's Duncan Bolam at DuncanBolam.com, The Purpose Coach, and I'm just trying to relay to anybody watching who might be interested in the notion of divining intention, because last night I had a dream, and it just goes to show how preoccupied I am with writing my book, which is many years in the process distilling 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 constantly my thoughts so it's in the re in relation to my life mission to solve the riddle the greatest riddle of all which is what i refer to as the meaning of life so what is my what am i here to do who am i how am i going to do it everybody's talking about purpose what does purpose mean actually what does mission mean? What are my values? So all these big questions are kind of burning up the internet. And I think I've got some really big answers because I've, I believe that the semantic fog of incorrect language is what holds so many people back. So for example, a skill can only be a verb. It's a doing word. That's why it's a skill. Yet people mix mix up skills with all kinds of other misapplications of language so anyway back to my dream so we've all heard of water diviners the people who use a a bit of birch or willow to div douse for divine for um for water hidden water underground um dousing divining divining being for me quite an, an interesting coincidence because it kind of correlates with anybody's notion of god source i am just for the sake of argument i am do not believe in any dogma i find dog dogma distinctly problematic it derives and gives cause to all of the conflict in the world so let's get get rid of dogma um I might as well get this out in the open important book you know lovely book somebody's done the research on the, the commonalities and the, the the synchronized thinking between jesus buddha krishna and lao tzu the parallel sayings by richard hooper coincidence that so many of humanity's most seminal thinkers shared so much in common yet divide so many back to my dream still so i believe in terms of divining our intention in life which is our understanding our purpose taking ownership of our purpose we have to learn to see with our three hearts so in my book my manuscript i'm talking about the work chakras mind heart gut so our brains our mind is the computer soft the computer hardware alone our guts and hearts are probably the operating systems the software that govern how our minds will work we've lost sight of that very few people are happy to admit they might have more than five senses i believe we have many more than six senses Remember the times you think somebody's staring at the back of your head on a bus and you turn around and they are looking at the back of your head and you're, you're wondering, why didn't I listen to that? So, meaning is an, an holistic effect for living life intentionally on our mission towards the likelihood that we are ascending towards a sense of purpose. So purpose is an ascent. Purpose is a guiding star in the whole constellation of human endeavor you know we're all here to work where we take on energy in the form of food we burn that energy to achieve work to do tasks and that is intended to bring us closer to our mission so purpose is the constellation in the heavens of human endeavor towards which we derive our energy, from which we derive our energy. So it, it, it's a feedback loop. Mission is the collection of tasks we do 
um, in the acquisition of satisfying the values we fulfill in the pro process of um, lives lived in positive intentionality. That's progress, also known as progress. The act of divining purpose, so interpreting, um, doing the, solving the riddle, the greatest riddle of all, what is the meaning of life, why am I here, what am I to do, where am I going in life, the problem which vexes so many of us as an obstacle, enter my potential thieving triangle, the green triangle at the bottom being the few, the minority of, of, of the population who tune into their um, potential and understand their mission and purpose in life compared to the majority of people who don't. They just haven't been able to do that or the opportunity hasn't arisen or they've been overtly discouraged for from doing that because a lot of people think it makes us egocentric or it makes us we kind of discriminate against people who are really quite confident we 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 obviously put our celebrities on a platform because they're bloody good at being self-assured and acting with conviction they act with conviction therefore we believe in them and that's their job is to sell themselves actors musicians you know performing artists they can't do that half-heartedly they've got to do it with their fullest in most inclusive self whereas the rest of society we we have a problem with that if it's happening in our office or in our organization that guy's really really good isn't he you know he's really Done a con he's, con done a he's convinced himself he thinks he's good. Bloody hell, how dare he be that full of himself? So there's a discrimination in there. But um, the, the act of divining purpose is the most complex riddle of a human has to decipher um, to access um, the maze of maximised potential. So consider that I say this elsewhere on the internet. Consider the, the scenario where, where in our final moments of life, it's coming to an end, not to be maudlin or morose, but it's going to happen. Why don't more of us get there replete thinking, my work's done. That was, that was a really good job. I had a really wholesome, productive life contributing to the good of society and I maximised all of my given qualities, which includes, you know, gifts, talents, skills, values, experiences, knowledges, all of these things blended together. Um, so a life filled by intentionality and the knowingness of steering a course towards a purpose vested in us by our life which is the marriage of nature and nurture so we have a epigenetic ep epigenetics which is the the um the capacities and attributes given to us by our genes and then we have the the amazing um power of experiential learning which we derive from living our lives, from leading our lives. So this is the, we understand an interface with our environment and our surroundings. We develop our tastes and our preferences and our um, capabilities are formed in this clutch face, this gearing between, you know, our, our nature and our nurture. And that is what, when we bring them together, it develops this sense of a scent and progress and moving onwards and upwards which so many people talk about the sensation that our lives are moving forward that we're building traction we're going somewhere and we're going towards that guiding star in the constellation of human endeavor which is what is our bearing point um, 
total success being the collective good derived from sharing our time travel um, with others we are happy to cooperate with in their attainment of in their fulfillment of in their understanding and comprehension of their purpose mission meaning and ascent so in my first book i talk i introduced the notion of vojo so austin powers talks about mojo i talk about vocationally generated energy vojo isn't it a nice comforting um, coincidence that in the international language of esperanto which was a noble cause in itself um, the word for the way is vojo i just love that so the universal language of divinity blimey you know divin divining is a verb but divinity is the noun you know divinity is what a lot of people refer to as their god i i would call it source or mother nature s-o-u-r-c-e source not hot source um and all of this coming together this tapestry is in, in more people feeling on mission in in their life living a life on purpose is what is the knit of communities so i'm afraid of artificial intelligence most people who are promoting artificial intelligence as being a good thing are invested in artificial intelligence they are the creators of it they are the, the factory owners and the shareholders who can make huge swathes of workers redundant because they've got a machine who's going to do it but faster more reliably whatever you know autonomous driving vehicles are going to make drivers redundant in the next 10 years how many haulage um, freight drivers heavy goods drivers are, are thinking about this coming along things areas like breast cancer detection it's great artificial intelligence is a is a godsend because it's faster more reliable cuts out human error and saves lives so optimum effect is great but across the rest of humanity the disruption coming from what i call the three headless horsemen of change which is decarbonizing the economy achieving net zero doing something about um, climate change we've got population um, explosion and um, we have the automation of of work you know we're going to lose we're going to go through massive volatility and it's going to be potentially very dystopian that the the economic the, the speed the, sh the speed of change is going to leave a lot of people behind a lot of people are not going to be vested in huge high tech high speed jobs and work there are going to be those of us who still want a rural economy they still want artisanal high quality heritage craft work to make their furniture to build their homes to to add depth the depth of human experience to the products that they buy you know i want i don't want my bread made by a machine i don't want my furniture automated you know i don't want mass produced if i can possibly afford it i want to invest in craftspeople i don't want to be medicalized by a robot i want human contact i want my doctor to have a heart i want my artists to be able to create and innovate i want culture to be real so the people who are promoting ai and machine learning and robots and nanotechnology as being a benefit are wrong don't get me wrong we could use all of this technology wonderfully we could create nanobots to go into the sea and scavenge all of the microplastics which are ruining the oceans we've each got plastic inside of us our children very soon into life they have plastic ingested in their system let's use technology to rectify that problem 
let's use massive scale engineering projects to rebuild the glaciers, to refreeze the ice caps. Let's use it to enable all of humanity to, to, to not be frightened, to do away with conflict, to rid the world of want. Let's use leverage technology in that way, but let's not use it to make render humans subservient to technology in the interests of greed and power and profit that would be really really a misuse so in wrapping up past 15 minutes already so in terms of the completion of the riddle all life forms who have done this well will emit light they are the light they are enlightened which is the how and why of having faith so i'm a holist i have faith in myself i believe the universe to be a benevolent place love is the driving force behind all life malevolence hatefulness division is where it's just going really badly wrong so once we live in the light we have discovered source, the origin, meaning, which is ultimately what I call, and I believe lots more people should call, love. So I'm a latter-day hippie. I'm a latter-day transcendentalist. I'm a Luddite. I'm very fearful of what technology is going to do to humanity because it's going to dehumanise humanity. So in terms of my final sort of thought, I think... It's again lovely the way the language gives us the answers. Faith, divinity, divining. If we divine our purpose, which is find it, use our intuition to discover the hidden resource within. When we do that, well, we end up having faith. We are closer to the divinity because we learn to love ourselves and we learn to accept and value and recognize others and we want to contribute our innate power to the good of society it's been regarded as naff to be a do-gooder but why would you not want to do good if it's going to reflect back so much of a dividend in return love just Take some time to reflect and maybe share your thoughts back to me. Thank you. Peace and purpose, Duncan.